Coming up, the Amarillo Fire Department celebrating 125 years of service, a look at that celebration and what's in store for the future. U.S. officials are weighing their options as the situation between Russia and Ukraine intensifies. I'm Alexandra Limon in Washington with that story coming up. And a cool night awaits us across the nation right now. Already 36 degrees for us in Amarillo. Those temperatures will continue to drop. Stay tuned for the floor of the forecast for more details. Live from your local news leader, home of the number one 10 p.m. newscast on the High Plains, KAMR Local 4 News at 10 starts now. The Amarillo Fire Department celebrating a major milestone this weekend. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jed Baker. KAMR Local Force Jack Kessler has more from the celebration and what the department has in store for the future. It's topping our news tonight at 10. The Amarillo Fire Department was established in 1897, and this weekend the department celebrated its 125th birthday. Emerald Fire Department Chief Jason Mays says it's nice to reflect on the landmarks the department has made in over a century that they have been around. Well, it's nice just to get together to reminisce on uh, basically from some of the earlier pages of history with our department and with our city and, uh, and just reflect a little bit on that. At the AFD birthday ball, there was dinner, cake, and a presentation to honor the firefighters that came before, as well as those who have died in the line of duty. Kyler Williams, who has been with the department for eight years, says the brotherhood within AFD is awesome. I played football, uh, Paladura, and that was one of my big reasons was because I wanted to be a firefighter, because uh, com camaraderie and uh, brotherhood. We've had some tragedies, and man, they have really stepped up and shown us what brotherhood is about. I thought I had a sense of it, but man, um, they've gone above and beyond, and it's a blessing to be a part of this uh, brotherhood. Chief May says as they honor the past 125 years, they're looking towards the future and how to still make improvements within the department. Probably one of our main areas of effort has been to increase our ALS standards and, and increase our EMS capabilities by training more paramedics and add more paramedic engines. Chief May says the department would like to thank the Emerald community for supporting them for 125 years. He adds they could not been a, be around as long as they have without the great support of the community. Live in studio, Jack Kessler, KMR, look for news. Judd? All right, Jack, thank you. Chief Mez Mays says that they're starting their fire academy this spring. Looking now at the latest coronavirus data from across the High Plains as we bring you facts, not fear, tonight at 10. 132 new COVID-19 cases were reported today. Thankfully, though, there were no new deaths to report today. You can see a county-by-county -county breakdown of those numbers waiting for you over on MyHighPlains.com. If you're looking to get the vaccine, the Amarillo Public Health Department has doses of both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines for everyone who is eligible for the initial series or the boosters. They are open Monday through Friday. You don't need to set up an appointment before you get the shot. There is no mobile vaccine clinic scheduled at this time. Who's to blame for the high prices of beef? The president blaming just four companies for the price spikes. We got to look at the latest in just a moment. But first, we're going to check outside with meteorologist Christian Rangel joining me now live from the Weather Center. Christian, good evening. Hey, good evening, Judd. So for us here in the viewing area, we're still staying clear and dry. As you can see in our radar and satellite tonight, most of the reflectivity is towards South Texas. It'll stay over there, but not for long. We might be seeing some reflectivity here in the, in the next few days. Right now, though, in our wind and radar, it's a light seven, to, uh, seven miles per hour. As you can see, downtown's already at 38, 36 at the airport. As we start our day for Monday, it's going to look very similar to today. Again, 20s in the morning, and then it'll be a breezy afternoon this time around. We're still going to be in the 50s, though. Looks like we'll hold on to 59 degrees for our high tomorrow around 4 p.m. Judd? All right, Christian, looking forward to that full forecast. Thank you so much. Of course. A police deputy was shot and killed during a traffic stop in Texas early this morning. According to the Harris County Police, 12-year veteran Corporal Charles Galloway was conducting a traffic stop around 1245 this morning. Police say that the suspect got out of his car and started firing at the officer several times before driving off. Galloway died at the scene. Police say that the unidentified suspect is currently still on the run. An investigation is ongoing. Now to the latest from your local election headquarters. The situation between Russia and the Ukraine intensifying. And the American officials are monitoring events closely as the world fears Russia will attack imminently. Alexander Lamone reports from our Washington Bureau. 
The British government says Russia is plotting to overthrow the government in Ukraine and install pro-Kremlin leaders. We've been warning about just this kind of tactic uh, for weeks. More than 120,000 Russian troops are stationed along Ukraine's border. On CNN's State of the Union, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the United States will not tolerate any Russian forces entering Ukraine. That would trigger uh, a swift, a severe, and a united response uh, from us uh, and from Europe. American officials say a Russian invasion of Ukraine would be the most serious threat to global peace since World War II. If he's able to go into Ukraine and there's very little pushback from the United States or from NATO, it allows him to move into other countries in Eastern Europe. While urging diplomacy, the U.S. says NATO will not meet Russian demands to ban Ukraine from future membership. Russia's other demands include that NATO pull back forces from Eastern Europe. The Kremlin denies it's plotting to overthrow Ukraine's leader. Here at home, some, like Congressman Michael McCall, say the U.S. shouldn't wait to find out. It's getting very aggressive. Uh, the noose is tightening around Ukraine. President Zelensky, as you mentioned, said he wants the sanctions now. But Secretary Blinken says the U.S. would lose leverage if sanctions are implemented too soon. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. Back here at home, the pre-application enrollment process for the Housing Choice Voucher Program waitlist lottery starting tomorrow. The HCVP provides rent help for low-income families. Enrollment starts tomorrow at 9 a.m. and ends February 7th at 5 p.m. Pre-applications will be accepted online only. We have the application website and more information on myhighplains.com. Just scan the code there on screen to go there now. For more political coverage, local, state, and national, head over to our website, myhighplains.com. You see the high cost of meat every time that you head into the supermarket, but tonight there are accusations from President Biden that four big meat companies are unfairly driving up the price surge. NBC's Jacob Ward reports. The price of beef is up 20% from this time last year. Ground sirloin is more than $5 a pound. Why? Well, from the cost of packaging to the cost of growing feed, every part of the supply chain is more expensive. But President Biden also blames industry consolidation. We end up with an industry like the meat processing industry where four big companies dominate the markets. Those big four? Tyson, Cargill, JBS, and National Beef, who together control roughly 85% of all beef production in America and saw their profits triple during the pandemic. Why isn't the market correcting itself in this case? So when there is no competition in a market, you're not going to get some of those dynamics that allow prices to ease. And consumers have little choice in the matter. When we walk into the grocery store, you see dozens of different brand names for meat. But the reality is about four companies own all of those different brands. And that, that doesn't give the consumer the ability to vote with their dollar. Of course, the pandemic raised prices in many industries. But in the meat industry, those effects were exacerbated by the lack of competition up and down the supply chain. The takeaway message should be clear. A concentrated food supply chain is a vulnerable food supply chain. Executives say the industry, hit hard by COVID and inflation, couldn't keep up with Americans consuming more meat during the pandemic. The present divide between live cattle and boxed beef prices is not the result of a consolidated industry lack of competition or the cash markets. The concentration of ownership within the meat processing industry is virtually unchanged over the past 30 years. And meat processors argue their size keeps meat affordable. When you have large players who can operate at scale, it means we can help keep prices lower for consumers. Industry consolidation alone is concerning enough, but there is ample evidence that these companies have engaged in illegal practices to hike prices. In October, JBS agreed to pay over $110 million to settle price-fixing allegations, and Tyson, which agreed to a $221 million price-fixing settlement, faces lawsuits from several major food sellers. But the big four maintain there is no collusion. Meanwhile, cattle ranchers like Scott Stone are getting only 39 cents for every dollar shoppers spend on beef, compared to 60 cents 50 years ago. Both the livestock producer and the consumer in the store are, are getting what we call the short end of the stick. 
Now, the White House says it will put a billion dollars toward building regional slaughterhouses, work with Congress to make the meat industry more competitive, and get all of us a fairer price. Capitalism without competition isn't capitalism. It's exploitation. Jake Ward, NBC News, San Francisco. There are iconic images that make up the rodeo coming up. How the picture of the American West may be different than you think. And later, we'll check back in with Christian for a full look at your forecast. You're watching KAMR Local 4 News at 10. Keep it right here. From your local news leader, home to Super Bowl 56 and the Winter Olympics, you're watching Judd Baker, meteorologist Christian Rangel, sports with David Davis. KAMR Local 4 News at 10 continues. The Cowboys of Color stepped into the spotlight at the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo recently. Noel Walker spoke to some of the competitors as they warmed up for their time in the arena. There are iconic images that make up the rodeo. The history books didn't quite tell the story. The picture of the American West might be different than you think. The Cowboys that rode the West. It wasn't matter what color your skin was. It was a matter. Of, it was a tough job, and who wanted to do the job, and who could do the job. One third of them were cowboys of color: African American, Native American, and Hispanic. Say hello to Mr. Cleo Hearn. That's why Cleo Hearn, seen here two years ago, started the Cowboys of Color Rodeo in 1971 to showcase the diverse contributions to cowboy culture. No more fitting day to have it than on MLK Day. And that's what we kind of need to embrace is that we all have to work together to get through where we're going today. He cannot hear a word we're saying. The Cowboys of Color Rodeo has been at the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo for 12 years. This year, more than 200 top rodeo athletes competed. For Frank Branch, this is home. And like a lot of people always tell me, you never see a colored cowboy. He wants to buck stereotypes, but not get bucked off a bronc. It's easy that you can overcome anything, that any challenge or anything like that. And, you know, a lot of kids look up to us like this, you know. They think we're superstars, and they want to be just like that when they grow up. Because if you can see it, you can be it. This isn't about what color you are. This is about us all being together, working together for one common goal. To find your spot in Western history. A new week and another round of lane closures next. What you need to know before you go to work and school in the morning. But first, we'll check in with Christian. And for those regional temperatures right now, we're looking at 30s and 50s across Texas. We'll get cooler overnight. Stay tuned for the floor of the forecast. I'll go into that in more details. Now, KAMR Local 4 meteorologist Christian Rangel from your local weather leader. Hey everybody, good evening and welcome back at our radar and satellite as we make our way towards our Monday. We are going to be seeing these clear conditions, sunny skies for tomorrow as well. As you can see, the only reflectivity is going on down south of us here in South Texas. However, we're waiting for a cold front to come from the north. It'll move through us on Tuesday and then that is when we can see our potential for some precipitation going towards our Wednesday from Tuesday to Wednesday. So for our almanac today, we did hit 56 degrees outside, a little bit above our average of 53 right here, so somewhat seasonal. We're still holding on to our record today, though. Our record high is still 77 degrees back in 1972. For other highs this afternoon, it really was a mid to high 50s mix for most of us here. Now, not everybody. A few of us did get to the 60s today. Children's at 61. Guyman also at 61. However, for tomorrow's afternoon forecast we're looking at more 60s on the board for those current winds right now light winds are expected for most of us here still mostly from the uh, south southwest we're not seeing any winds really exceed 10 miles per hour and those light winds will continue on through tomorrow however not all day tomorrow here's our wind forecast as we make our way towards monday we do see a wind shift as those winds become westward and then we're going to see those northerly winds and that's when they can pick up in their 
uh, mile per hour, as you can see right here, around 18 miles per hour by 2 p.m. For our McCoy downtown camera, current conditions are already 36 degrees outside, though it does feel like 30 thanks to those winds. Even though they're light, they're still at 7 miles per hour from the south-southwest. Our pressure is sitting at 30.01 inches in mercury. That's still high pressure, but it is slowly decreasing. For our day planner, as we make our way towards Monday, again, it's going to be a cold start. Hanging on to those consistent 20s in the morning, we will work our way towards 52 by the afternoon, and that's when those winds do kick in for us. We're going to still be seeing windy conditions towards 4 p.m., where we expect our afternoon high to be around 59 degrees. And then for those morning temperatures, again, cold one for a lot of us here. 20s mix, only Dalhart is going to be in the teens, around 19 still. And then for those afternoon temperatures, again, sunny conditions, breezy winds, and mostly 50s as you can see here, but a few 60s on the board as well. And here is the seven day forecast as we make our way towards the rest of the week. Here's that cold front that already hits us by our Tuesday. We'll be seeing those effects in the 40s for our temperatures. And then again, a precipitation chance as early as noon for our Tuesday. However, that chance increases as we enter those overnight hours, about 50%, and as we make our way towards Wednesday morning as well. So driving conditions might be icy and snow packed as you start your Wednesday. But then after that, those temperatures will increase towards the 50s. A few weak fronts will hit us, but it'll keep us in that seasonal temperature range. And of course, with breezy winds on the weekend as well. You can check all this out and more on myhighplains.com and download our KAMR Local 4 Weather app. All right, Judd, back to you. All right, Christian, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Of course. Time for a look at this week's lane closures from Textile Amarillo. Don't forget that you can scan the code here on your screen anytime to view a full list of this week's lane closures. Starting off, foreclosures and traffic switches will continue at the Helium Road at I 40 project. That is on Tuesday and Thursday, and work continues on the Whitaker Lakeside and Pullman Bridge replacement project. That's tomorrow. And Tuesday, those closures will be taking place. All right, let's bring in Aaron Rosas filling in in the sports department tonight. Aaron, good evening. Good evening, Judd. Coming up next, we have highlights as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the Los Angeles Rams and the Buffalo Bills face the Kansas City Chiefs. We've got that next in sports. Tampa Bay Buccaneers battling out against the Los Angeles Rams to see which team will advance to the NFC Championship game. Second quarter Rams up 10 to 3 Stafford. He will take this way down and find a wide open Cooper Cup who takes it all the way for the 70 yard touchdown. Making these happen both these guys. Third quarter Rams up 20 to 3. Stafford sees Odell Beckham Jr. who makes a beautiful nice one handed catch later on the drive. Stafford keeps the sneak and scores the one-yard touchdown. Rams up 27-3. Third quarter, Fournette scores the one-yard rushing touchdown. Bucks down 27-13. to 13. Fourth quarter, Bucks still down. Brady goes deep and finds Evans for the 55-yard touchdown. Bucks trail trying to make things happen. Cam Akers rushes up the middle. Dominican Sue forces a fumble. David recovers it. Bucks take over with two minutes left in this quarter. Fourth and one, Fournette bounces it to the outside and scores the nine yard touchdown. Game tight at 27. Things are going down right now. Stafford, looking for his man, goes to the sideline and finds Cup again for a gain of 20 yards. We're going to see the next play. Stafford goes deep and finds Cup again. The defense for 44 yard drive. Cup has two clutch catches in the final drive. Four seconds left after Stafford clocked the ball. Matt Gay will drill this down 30 yards. Field goal. Rams win 30 to 27. Advance to the NFC Championship to take on the 49ers. We're going to see the second playoff game. Buffalo Bills taking on the Kansas City Chiefs to see who will advance. We see Josh Allen throwing it down all the way down, making things happen for this team. Fourth quarter. Bills down 26 to 21, fourth and long. Allen will find Davis, 27 yard touchdown. Great things happening for this team. Ensuing drive. Mahomes finds Tyreek Hill over the middle, who turns on the Jets. Takes it all the way down to the house, 64 yards. Chiefs lead 33 to 29, 17 seconds left. Allen goes right up the seam to Davis. Way finds his man. 
A little bit later on, seven seconds left. Mahomes trying to make things happen. Harrison Butker knocks down the 49-yard field goal. Game will head into overtime. We'll see these two teams battling out. First possession of OT, Mahomes finds Kelsey in the corner, throwing it down, trying to make it happen to the end zone for the game-winning touchdown. Chiefs win 42-36 to in overtime and advance to face Cincinnati Bengals in the AFC Championship game. Thank you. Back to you, Jed. All right, Erin, thanks so much for stepping into the sports department and helping out tonight. We greatly appreciate it. Yes, I had a great time. Thank you so much, Judd. All right, keep it here. Christian has a final look at your forecast after the break, but first, here's Rochelle. Good evening, everyone. Coming up tomorrow on Today in Amarillo, our Heart of the High Plains series continues with the Don Harrington Discovery Center. We'll talk about their newest exhibits as well as their merger with Wildcat Bluff Nature Center when we see you back here tomorrow on Today in Amarillo. Welcome back, everyone, for a final look at our weather tonight. Again, some clear conditions for us here in the viewing area. Precipitation is down south right now, but we're going to hopefully try and get some as we get that cold front moving through. Day planner for our Monday. Again, looking at some warmer temperatures towards the afternoon. Breezy conditions as well. We're looking to cap off around 59 degrees at that time. And then for the seven day this week, Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be our cooler days in the 40s. Again, precipitation chance could be snow for those days, especially Wednesday. Day morning. We'll be keeping tabs on that. But as we head towards the weekend, it's going to be warmer towards the 50s, more seasonal and breezy conditions as we head forward. Judd? All right, Christian, thank you. MyHighPlains.com, that's the place to go for the latest in news, weather, and sports. Finally, tonight, it is not just for Apple. Dessert pies of all kinds are being celebrated today for National Pie Day. The Romans made them as goat cheese and honey pies. England filled them with meat 800 years ago and Puritans brought them to us as pumpkin and pecan. What's your favorite pies guys before we go? Gotta be pumpkin pie. <laughs> Probably blueberry. Real good.